Um, I haven't spoken about clotting for some time, and I thought that this evening I should share with you a little bit of insight into why I keep talking about unusual embalmers clots that sounds like a conspiracy. And for some people, it would represent a risk to credibility because what serious scientist or doctor would be talking about abnormal clotting because if it was occurring, we would see it already. That can sometimes be the thinking. However, to understand where I'm coming from, you have to understand the sequence of things that happened at the time. And this is now probably about two years ago that made me take this stance. So for the first time in 2023, I had interviewed Tom Haviland and Tom is a retired major from the US and he was focused on embalmers clots and some of the abnormal, uh, abnormal patterns that were being seen. And um, he was raising awareness through research, uh, looking at surveys on abnormal, abnormal clot patterns. And so when I interviewed him, it became clear to me that there was something unusual happening here. And when I eventually got the bigger story, talking with people like Richard Hirschman and Embama, and I realized how it became like a conspiracy theory, I suddenly realized the scientific significance of what was happening. So I think it was just coincidental at the time when Died Suddenly came out as a documentary that it was immediately classed as an anti-vax hit at the, um, at, at the institutions at the time. And so it was largely ignored. Now, what I then realized is that he was specifically raising awareness about an observation and the observation got picked up in a certain way that would then position it more like an argument about vax versus anti-vax rather than purely objective observational science. There is something abnormal happening here with regards to clotting and as embalmers, we don't know why it's happening, okay? So that's where it started from. And then two things happened in early 2024. This is about two years ago now. The first thing that happened is that I was contacted by someone far away from me in the world who was doing research on the clots. Now, up to this time, I had been presuming that nobody would even try and take a look at it, and it was raising awareness of the point. But then I was brought to my attention that there were scientists who were quietly trying to do the research. And they were going about it in a very cautious, systematic way. They didn't want to be known because it had a risk of scientific credibility. Anybody who was involved in that kind of research would immediately be labeled as, you know, out there. And for scientists where peer review and um, a degree of, of, of um, respectability in their field is critical, that may have been too big a risk to take. It was such an important conversation that I recorded it at the time. And I said, I need to keep this for posterity so that people will know just what they were thinking at the time and the kind of risk that they were taking to try and get this research done. So it's important to note that there are still many good scientists out there who will find ways to be able to, to see if they can get to the truth, but it always comes with risk. And hopefully, I think that some of those scientists, I think, have come forward already. You may not know that they were connected. And in time, it may become clearer who they are and uh, even now why they're hesitant to be more visible in terms of this kind of work that they were doing. But no doubt about it, it indicated to me 
the seriousness of what was going on. Listen, and all I can tell you is that after I had that conversation, I had to sit down and reflect on the implications that they had seen. Meaning that what they were seeing here is that they were saying this, they have never seen anything like this before. And the implications to human health were quite significant. And so when we look at it that way, you realize that in reality, we are dealing with quite a, a significant situation that can, in a sense, probably only get worse. Now, the second thing that happened that I think is very important is that I then got contacted coincidentally within a few months by a whistleblower who was located somewhere else in the world. But up till that time, we had thought these clots only occurred in the dead. So they were embalmer's clots. They were not occurring in the living. But it was very clear to me that when this person got in contact, they clearly indicated that this was something that was happening in the living as well. And that completely changed everything. And in case you haven't seen it yet, I've, I've still got the recording here. Are embalmer's clots occurring in the living? The description, it's in the description, the link. And um, what you can do, this, this has probably one of the most viewed videos I've had. And this was done in February of 2024. And if you're not squeamish, it shows you, he took pictures of all these clots all the way through. I mean... This is some pretty serious stuff, and um, it then made it real. It was not imaginary. It was real. There were not only happening with regards to embalmers, but these were also happening in living people and were being removed by embolectomies. That's where they have a massive clot. You have to do a procedure and take out the clot. And so... These two episodes made me realize that all I can do is continue to raise awareness. So you then have other scientists like Kevin McCarran uh, getting on board, finding high levels of amyloid. And as I said, we have never seen this extensive um, presentation before. And the mere fact that it is still ongoing, it hasn't disappeared, um, indicates to me that it is not just the vax. This is how some people think about it. I, I don't doubt that this is a significant contributor. And I think it may be related to bits of the lipid nanoparticles, not necessarily just the spike protein. It's very, very complex science that is going on. And one of the scientists is finally going to do a book from his perspective about exactly what he is seeing and what he thinks it is. Um, and I think that we do need a lot more scientific uh, input into trying to understand these patterns. Part of the reason why the medical community has largely overlooked this is because we don't see it on standard angiograms. Meaning if you, angiograms are done almost every day in hospitals all over the world. And if there was a clot that big that was just sitting there, it would be picked up. And so there are some people who are worrying, oh my goodness, do I have clots like that in me? I think it's unlikely. The people who have that kind of clotting are usually very, very unwell which is why they would end up in a catheter lab where you're having to put out massive clots. The normal person, I don't think, could have it because it's not compatible with life or it makes you very sick. So we are still at a point where at that time, two years ago, I could never have imagined that this would not have been answered, really. I mean, and I'm starting to realize that I could still be talking about this in the same way five years down the line. But the implications of what it means with regards to clotting and human physiology are horrendous. 
because clotting is one of those mechanisms that needs to be very tightly regulated. You have a very tight balance. If you have too little clotting, you bleed to death. That's hemophilia uh, and so on. And so if you can't clot, you bleed. This is the risk when we have patients on blood thinners. Right on the other side is that if you start making too many clots, you block the blood vessels. And that's what would lead to heart attacks, strokes, pulmonary emboli, deep vein thrombosis, all, you know, all of these other vascular um, issues. And so clotting has to be so tightly regulated that anything that throws it slightly out of balance is a risk at a population level. We still don't understand exactly why. And so speculating about the exact cause, uh, whilst I think that it may be a reasonable inference, we still don't know how and why. Because none of these things happen temporarily with regards to when somebody has been jabbed. So it's not as if somebody has been jabbed and they suddenly get all of these things. It doesn't happen like that. And so my instinct is that this is more autoimmune. It's more likely that this occurs on, say, a reinfection in an immune-primed person, where then it triggers off a clotting cascade that then produces all of these very, very unusual clots. And, and as I said, they can occur in the living. This is what one of them looked like in the... Um, in the link. So take a look at the link if you want to see all of these images. Um, wherever it is white, uh, these are some massive clots that were taken out, and it is representative of an unusual pattern that we still need to understand. There's still a lot of work to be done, but never forget the people who have been quietly working and pushing. And as I said, I do remember Tom, Haviland, he has done an incredible job of raising the profile and just keeping attention on this issue. The embalmers, some internationally who have really stuck out their neck and kept on talking about it, even when they were criticized, even when others said there's no such thing. And then the scientists, the scientific community who quietly went and did the detailed research to try and understand the protein mechanisms and to try and make sense as to how in the world does this occur? When does it occur? Who is affected by it? The first doctor, Dr. Charles Comrie um, from Jamaica, who came forward and said, yep, I've seen this in one of my autopsies. All of it together indicates that this is something significant. It should never have been ignored. It should not be ignored now. And there is a responsibility, whether or not it fits within a narrative, to investigate it thoroughly. Time will tell whether or not in another few years, I'm still talking about this as if it's some kind of a conspiracy or something. And I, as I said, I could never have believed two years down the line, it would still not have been investigated thoroughly and the scientific community would still think that this is something in the imagination of embalmers across the world seeing the same thing and wondering how is this possible still a lot more work to do many people to convince and this could take us a decade have a good evening A hero, an immune adventure, Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.